What is going on, everybody? Silver Scrounger here. It's a new year, and I hope it is a great one for all of us. But today is Wednesday, and it's a day for another Constitutional Silver Series episode. All right, we have already looked at the dimes and quarters, and if you haven't seen them yet, you can go check them out in my Constitutional Silver series, which I will leave a link to that down below in the description. So today, we'll be looking at the half dollars. And like the other coins that we've looked at so far, these were authorized by the Act of April 2nd 1792 but these didn't get first minted until 1794 a couple of years earlier than the other coins we've looked at so far there's quite a few different designs through the 176 years of the silver half dollars and they are the flowing hair half dollar the draped bust half dollar the Cat Bust Half Dollar. The Liberty Seated Half Dollar. The Barber Half Dollar. The Walking Liberty Half Dollar. Franklin Half Dollar. And the Kennedy Half Dollar. With so much to cover on these designs, we are going to have to do a two-part show on this one just like we did with the quarters. And in this episode, we will talk about the flowing hair, the drape bust, and the cat bust half dollars. But first, this video and the Constitutional Silver Series is sponsored by Royal Coins and Jewelry. If you're looking for some specific coins for a collection or trying to stack some silver or gold for the lowest cost, you really need to go check out Royal Coins and Jewelry. Their silver and gold prices are drastically lower than online dealers and even beat out competing shops. You can stop by the shop if you're in the Houston area or check out their website at royalcoins.com. And yeah, I know, you're thinking, but scrounger, any savings on the price, I'm just dumping into shipping. Well, you can forget about that nonsense. When you go check out, use my promo code S S. You'll get free first class shipping, a value of up to six dollars. I will leave a link to their website as well as their Instagram page down below in the description. So, unlike the dimes and the quarters that started minting in 1796, the half dollar started two years earlier in 1794 with the flowing hair design. These were minted for only two years, 1794 and 1795. So we're going to talk about both of these years. The 1794 half dollar in a low AG grade can be worth over $2,000. So it's just worn down as much as possible coin for $2,000. It's amazing. Just one year ago, there was one graded at MS64 Plus that was sold at Heritage Auction for an amazing $870,000. That is one expensive coin. Now, as far as the $1795 half dollar, there are four different varieties to look at. The normal date recut date, small head, and the three leaves under each wing. So on the normal date, you'll see that the date on the coin is just typical normal 1795. Everything else is all typical and normal on the coin. On the recut date, let's zoom in on it and you'll see 
how it looks like there's a 1795 that is set below almost exactly on the rim of the coin. That is the recut date. Then you got the small head, which I couldn't find a, a good example to show. So it's not too much of a concern because the first three varieties that I just covered, the normal date, the recut date, and the small head, they're all pretty much close to the same value, starting at six to seven hundred dollars in an AG condition, which isn't nothing too shabby really. But the three leaves below each wing, that one we need to take a little bit closer look at. On the normal date, you'll see here where I have it circled, you got two leaves on each side. But when we look at the three leaves variety, you'll notice that there's three leaves on each side, just like it says. This one can actually be worth a good about thousand dollars in that same AG condition. Although those are some really nice prices, they don't even compare to the next ones. And they are the Drape Bust Half Dollars. These Half Dollar Danes were minted from 1796 to 1807. And there are two main varieties for this design. The first two years were with the small eagle on the reverse. If you happen to get your hands on a 1796 or a 1797 small eagle reverse, they're worth way over $20,000 in a low AG grade. That is amazing and crazy to me. But wow. Anyway, there was one in a Stax and Bowers auction with a MS66 grade that sold for, wait for this one, $1.5 million dollars I just feel like Dr. Evil with his finger up to his mouth when I say that one <laughs> 1.5 million dollars and that was back in May of 2015 I don't know if there's any other coin that sold for that much that I've covered so far in this whole series after 1797 they didn't mint another half dollar until 1801, which is when they came out with the heraldic eagle reverse. And this design was minted for the next six years until 1807. None of them sell less for the $200 in a G4 condition. However, there are three key dates, with one being a slight variety that goes for major money. The 1801 and 1802 are nice key dates that go for $900 to $1,200 in a G4 condition. But if you happen to have one like this 1806 with the olive branch stem not going through the claw, the lowest grade known for this one is in a VG grade and it can get as much as $70,000. So these are some really big numbers that are getting thrown around. But now we're going to get into the next design, which is the Cap Bust Half Dollar. They were minted from 1807 all the way until 1839. And this is where we get into all kinds of overdates and other errors and varieties. Some of which really raise the coin's value. So... If you happen to come across one with an odd looking date, make sure you do your own research on it because it may just be worth a few bucks. Most of the common years will start off in the $65 to $80 range for a G4 grade and shoot up to a few thousand dollars once you get to the mint state grades. So I'm going to point out a few that start off above $500 for that bottom grade. That way we're not here for the next hour listening to me ramble on. The first one up is the 1807 
Bearded Liberty. It looks like a severe die crack that gives the Lady Liberty a bit of a beard coming off her chin. It also goes up close to her eye and then up through the uh, cap. But the main part is where she gets her name, the Bearded Liberty, is on her chin. This one can be worth a cool thousand dollars in G4. So, now our next major player is an 1812. The typical 1812 cap bust half dollar will be a nice $75 in a G4 condition. But, if you pay close attention to two specific details, you can get 10 to 25 times that amount. The first one is the single leaf below the wing. And it kind of looks like this. The single leaf under the wing is of course on the left side and it is the top leaf here. Normally there's two leaves there. Just like all the other leaves that you see there, there's two of them. That one happens to have a single leaf on the top. So that's what you need to be looking for is that single leaf. That coin right there can get you a good $750 in a G4 condition. The other one to look for is the 1812 2 over 1 with the large 8. So let's get a good look at what I just said there, what I'm talking about, and sort it out. Alright, so if you happen to look at the bottom 1812, yes, it's a 2 over 1, but it's with the small 8. You can tell a big difference between the small 8 and the large 8 on top. The problem is the 2 over 1 seems to be a little bit less noticeable on that large 8 date. However, if you are able to find this one, it is able to command a nice $2,000 in a low grade. Another one to look for is the 1815 capped bust half dollar. This one has a very low mintage. And they start off at a $1,400 price tag in a G4 condition. And they can get as high as $50,000 in a mint state. Now, on to the holy grail of the cat bust half dollars. That would be the 1817 with the 7 over 4. There's only 8 known to exist. And let me show you what it looks like. Right here, you can see pretty clearly the couple of spots on the 4 that's underneath that 7. So, 1817, 7 over 4. And because there's only 8 of these known to exist, it can command a huge $140,000 price tag in a fine grade. Now, there's also an 1820 cat bust half dollar with no serifs on the E's. And that one can get a quick thousand dollars in a G4 condition. After that one, we have to jump a full 10 years to 1830, where you need to look for large letters on the reverse. And this one will get probably closer to $1,200 in a G4 condition. Then in 1836, they changed the denomination on the back or reverse from the 50 C for 50 cents of course to 50 cents now the 1836 with the 50 cents spelt out is pretty valuable starting off at $900 in a low grade then we're going to move on to 1838 this is the year that we saw the first mint mark show up 
on the half dollar. And it was from New Orleans. Only 20 were minted. And the lowest price I could find was $300,000 in an EF grade. So, there are the first three main designs we wanted to look at this week. And it was quite a bit. If there was anything I missed and thought it should be in the video, please leave a comment down below to let us know what it is. And I will add it into the next one. Speaking of which, it will be next week and we will continue on the half dollar covering the rest of the designs which are the seated liberty half dollar the barber half dollar walking liberty half dollar franklin half dollar and the kennedy half dollar and i got some pretty interesting facts to cover with some of those designs so you don't want to miss it but until then this is silver scrounger saying thanks for watching and keep on stacking I want to thank everyone for watching my video. It is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, found it informative or entertaining, please hit that thumbs up button by liking the video. Also, comment on what you think about anything discussed. I'm always interested in to hear other people's thoughts. Until next time, this is Silver Scrounger saying thanks for watching and keep on stacking.